tournament against Kevin Rozier from New York. They're both very, very adept kickboxers, both tall, both very strong, both very good technicians. You have a Kempo stylist against basically a kickboxer that uses the boxing techniques along with the kicking techniques from Taekwondo from kicking. I am Kevin Rose. I'm the five-time world kickboxing champ. I'm going to win this tournament. My best technique is an overhand right. I'm going to hit him. They're not going to get up because it's bare knuckle, bare rule, no, no rules. And uh, I'm here to win. I think I detect a little bit of nervousness in his face well, It looks a little bit. Yeah. But again, you know, he just, they just saw in the monitors what had happened. So I think he's things headed. This is, this is live time now. It's time to wake up and do the work. Now with Zane Frazier from Hollywood, California. It, it this we spoke to Zane earlier on his feelings and his thoughts about the fight. Join us. Okay. My name is Zane Frazier. I'm from North Hollywood, California. My style is Ed Parker's American Kempo Karate. And the reason I think I'm going to win is that uh, God's going to give me the strength and the courage and to do all the right things at the right time, and that's going to be my advantage. And now to our ring announcer, Ron Goins. Ladies and gentlemen, the competitors for our second match of tonight, holding a fourth degree black belt in American Kempo Karate. Our next fighter answers the bell at 6'6", 230 pounds from North Hollywood, California, four-time international karate champ, and the WKF Super Heavyweight Kicks Boxing Champion. Please say hello out of the red corner to Zane Frazier. And his opponent at 6'4 and 265 pounds. He has an impressive record of 66 and eight. All 66 wins by KO, the three-time WKA World Super Heavyweight Kickboxing Champion and the ISKA North American Super Heavyweight Kickboxing Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Kevin Rozier. Now, if you notice, our referee for our second match, Leo Bizarro. Yeah, but you see, the, the knuckles aren't actually wrapped. No, the hands are wrapped to protect the wrist, I believe. Yeah. And the knuckles are bare. They're protruding out. The thumb is protected a little bit because oftentimes when you're punching, you might catch a thumb on a shoulder or something like that just protects any kind of a breakage. Don't you wish you could tape your whole body, Jim? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bill, you would know more about that than me. Uh, I only tape my ankles. Pain hurts. Let me tell you, it ruins your whole day. What I don't understand is why they're in the middle of the ring. <laughs> There's nothing to talk about. Well, I think they're going over the rules here. Yeah, the <laughs> three rules. There are none. No eye gouging. Yeah, okay. Kathy, would you like to meet in the middle of the ring like that? Uh, no, sir. I don't want to get close <laughs> to anybody when it's time to fight. Not when they're that big. And they're starting. Here we go. Now we get some good footwork here. Now there's a lot of strategy now. Well, that's not unusual to have a fight just like that go to the ground. It's again a lot of power. I don't think anything will. Good right hand. Good right hand. Oh, that well, was a clear point shot. And the referee doesn't seem to notice. Strategy pulling hair. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that wasn't talked about in the rules meeting. Exactly, but it should be legal. It should be allowed. It's part of the body. I think it is. You see some of the hair falling down on the yes. ground there. There's quite a bit coming out there. Well, he's let go of the hair now. Oh. Well, that knee came right up into the chin. Yep. 
Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be working. They're going to be working. This is going to take a lot of energy because if you can see, it's only been maybe a minute or so into the match, and they're breathing a little bit. Yeah. If these two knew how to grapple, I think it might end a little sooner. It might sooner, yes. But the thing of it is, I don't think as big as they are, they want to go down to the ground. Now, Kevin is using a little bit of elbows. Now, if you look at their knuckles, they're getting a little red because they are hitting elbows. They are it's hitting deep. bone. That was a great uppercut. That's straight right hand. Playing now, they got to rest a little bit. Oh, the rest fatigue factor is a major factor. Of... Great knee to the solar plexus there. You see that? Zane looks like he's picking the shots. The crowd seems to be enjoying it. And if you know some more strategy, they're going to lay on each other a little bit with that weight. Rest a little bit now. Yeah, they got to rest a little bit. Yeah, because this is a lot of this is you're up a, a mile up in the air, and it takes a lot of energy to throw these punches, and also to defend yourself against this kind of a weight factor. Yeah, I know that uh, a lot of times when you're in the clinch, and a mouthpiece just fell out. Yeah, you see that. Oh. Got it down to the ground. I think they're both a little bit out yeah, of the league on this one. Yeah, a little bit of choke. Yeah. A good knee to the face. Yes, indeed. Now it's going to get into a little bit of wrestling that I don't think they know that much about. But it seems to be Zane used to be, be doing pretty good here. He needs to stay down. And they broke through. I think there's a little bit of tiredness out there, Jim. A little bit, though. Jim, did you ever get this tired? I doubt it, because the combination of things that they're doing would make anyone really totally fatigued. Well, when you were playing, they didn't have a, a team in Denver, did they? No. <laughs> and a little goodness. different playing here. Oh. So they a lot of swelling. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're slow now. They're trying to yeah, set things up. Here. Oh. You know, a lot of times in boxing, when you strike to the back of the head yes. like that, it's totally illegal, but everything goes here. Fatigue got him, baby. I think fatigue got to him. He went too hard, too soon, too often. Yep. Kevin took some punishment, though. Oh, he really Kevin did. Kevin took a lot he of punishment. He really did. Okay, here, we're going to see the replay now. Watch. Zane was doing all the power before. Now, all of a sudden, Kevin comes back, catches some of those pummeling blows to the top of the head, forces Zane down. Four or five or six punches. Now comes the stomping, and bam! I think and when he you tries to get up, and bam again. I think right about now the towel comes in. Yes. Yep. Yep. When you strike him in the back of the head like that, it can easily knock somebody out. If you're, it it, it kind of discombobulates you because you really don't know where you are, whether you're standing, where you're sitting, because it knocks you a little bit off balance. Jim, being hit in the back of the head when you were tackled, oftentimes you're like, where am I going? Am I going the wrong way? But the main point is that fatigue struck in and he basically gave up. Exactly. Yeah, fatigue comes in. I want to rest. Yeah. Five minutes is a long time this first round. It really is. I'm telling you. Well, Zane seems to be okay. He's just kind of sitting down and relaxed. I'm sure he's disconcerted also Kevin, simply because he was doing so Kevin. well. What's going through your mind after, after you got hit early on? What am I doing out of retirement? Yeah. What about the endurance, the five minutes? Did it really seem like five minutes? Could have been like no, a 30. Like an hour. It seemed like an hour. And what, when did you realize that you had him? About 10 seconds ago. About 10 seconds ago. He was getting tired. He was getting tired. We saw he was getting tired. What, what did you expect going in? What do you expect he now? He punched out. He punched out. What was your strategy? Let him hit me. And then, and then how did it unfold? And then you realized, what were you shooting for, a five-round bout? No, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm really sorry. I'm not a great interviewer. We gotta get some rest. We gotta, we gotta get, get some rest. We gotta get ice on him. Je Kevin, still got the sense of humor intact. Congratulations on the victory. We, we gotta get ice on him. There he is, the winner. Now back to Bill and Jim and, and Kathy. If you think what he just said, he said, I'll take the punishment. I'll make the guy get tired. I'll make Zane get tired. He'll get more tired than me. Then I'll come back and pummel him. Z uh, Kevin is great at taking punishment. He took some. He didn't look that bad in the face either. He's it looked a big like guy. he was almost finished himself a minute. Oh, he did. Well, at the time over here, when he was in this corner here, I thought he was in a lot of trouble. Kathy was saying, uh oh, he's gone, he's gone. Kathy, I thought I was very much impressed the way he came back. I'm very impressed also. I mean, the, uh, his strategy let the guy hit me. Um, seemed to seemed to work out really well. Well, I might interject. I don't really think it was a matter of coming back. I really think that the fatigue set in. And when the fatigue set in, there was no defense. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of times, you can have all the heart in the world. We were talking about this earlier. When you have all the heart in the world and you're sucking wind, all that power that you had is gone. My, all that speed that you had is gone. My greatest fear was fatigue. Oh, exactly. If I, I mean, was in great shape, I feared no one. Because the will is the ability to overcome the, the fatigue. The first thing you do when you went to training camp was run those laps. Oh, there's Make no doubt sure you get it. yourself physically fit. Because in the fourth quarter, the same thing will happen in football that happened here. Exactly. Bill, you're going to see something interesting in the... Uh... Now, watch watch this. Now, Kevin is, is doing a lot of pummeling now. He hasn't really hit him solid yet, except on the top of the head. So he's not really going for the body. Zane is like, I think, saying, I think I want to take the day off. Yep. Because yeah, now he's... Point, I he think, yeah, right now, I, yeah. Think, I think Kevin could have backed up, and he would have just said, no, I'm just going to sit here. Because the stomp didn't really do that much. And I don't think this one does do an MIG either because more of a push. But I think Zane was just too tired to do anything. Yeah. Well, over here, the, the, the mouth.